I want to talk about DuPont analysis. DuPont analysis is a tool for decomposing return on equity. And here what I have is I've gone to Morningstar.com and I've called up the financial ratios of Apple computers. And you can see down here they give you the return on equity from 2002 third quarter to 2011 third quarter. And you can see that um, the return on equity has been going up. And you know, we would think that's a good thing. The question is, why is it going up? Can we break up return on equity into its component parts so we can better understand why it's why it's getting better? And so let's let's take a look at this. Return on equity by definition is net income divided by equity. Now, what we can do is we can perform a mathematical trick. We can multiply and divide by the same number, which would be the same as multiplying or dividing by one, which does nothing to, to change the equation. But if we rearrange the terms, we can decompose the parts of return on equity. So the first thing I want to do is I want to multiply by sales over sales. Okay, again, you could cancel these and, and nothing would change. And let's, let's rearrange those terms so that we get the following. Net income over sales times sales over equity. And what's this first part? Net income over sales is profit margin. Sales over equity is what we refer to as equity turnover. Equity turnover measures how effectively the company uses its equity to generate sales. Profit margin tells us how much money is left over you know we, we sell a certain amount of goods at sales how much is left over after we pay off everybody after we pay for the cost of goods sold after we pay any administrative expenses interest expenses taxes what's left over for us so we've decomposed it and let's decompose it one more time so I'm gonna multiply this by total assets over total assets. So again, it doesn't change anything because we could cancel total assets with total assets. We could cancel uh, sales and we would be left with net income over equity. Let's rearrange our terms and we're going to get the following. We're going to keep net income over sales times, but now we're going to have sales over total assets. Times total assets over equity. And you can see that we can rearrange these terms. We could re we could cancel these terms here. We could cancel sales with sales, we could cancel total assets with total assets, and we would be left with net income over equity. So we still have the same return on equity equation. But what do we have here? Again, we have profit margin. Here we have sales over total assets. This is what we refer to as total asset turnover okay or sometimes just referred to as asset turnover that measures how efficiently we use our assets to generate sales and here we have a measure of leverage this is what we call the equity multiplier
This tells us how much debt are we using to finance the firm. Total assets are going to be equal to liabilities plus equity. So implicitly here, we're looking at, when we look at this ratio, we're, we're figuring out what level of debt we're using relative to equity. So now let's think about it. If return on equity, and let me write that over here, if return on equity goes up, if it goes up because profit margin improved, that's a good thing. If it went up because total asset turnover improved, that's also a good thing because we've become more efficient at using our assets to generate sales. But if it goes up only because we've increased the equity multiplier, that is, we've increased the amount of debt we're using, the amount of leverage we're using, that's not necessarily a good thing because we could be increasing the risk of the firm. The more debt you use, the greater the risk of bankruptcy. So let's go back to our um, our spreadsheet here. I'm sorry, our, our Morningstar numbers, and let's see what we have here. Well, let's look at what's happened to net profit margin. 1.13 in 2002, 1.11, 3.23, 9.58, okay? All the way out to 2011, it's gone up to 23.95. So that, that's good. Profit margin has improved significantly between 02 and 2011. Asset turnover, 0 0.93, 0 0.95, 1.11, 1.42, 1.34, 1.131, 0.99, 1.06, 1.13. 1 so I had a little blip here where it got a little better, but for the most part, and there are a couple of periods where it wasn't too good, but for the most part, it's been about 1.1, 1.12. So that hasn't changed too much. How about the financial leverage? The financial leverage, 1 1.54, 1 1.61, 1 1.59, 1 1.55, 1 1.72, 1 1.78, 1 1.50, 1 1.57, 1 1.52. So it went up a little bit here in 06, 07, and 08, but then it, it fell back down again. So it's not leverage. The reason return on equity has improved so much is because profit margin has improved significantly. Let me see if I can shrink this down and bring my calculator over here. And let's see how this works. If we, It should work that if we multiply net margin, 1.13, times asset turnover, 0.93, times financial leverage, 1.54, we should get return on equity. We get 1.618, or we can round off to 1.62, and that is, in fact, what they have here in 2002. Okay, let's pick uh, 2011, and let's check it out again here it's 23.95 times 1.13 times the financial leverage which is 1.52 and we get 41.13 they have 41.67 but pretty close, probably some rounding error or something in the way they calculated, but awfully close. So you can see that this DuPont analysis concept is a really useful tool for being able to decompose return on equity to get a better understanding as to why your company is doing better. And the reason we call it DuPont analysis is the DuPont company is the one that, that started using this to try and understand their return on equity, and this has become a common tool in financial analysis.